So hi everyone, uh, my name is Stuart Lang. I uh, I I love all things .NET. That's what you need to know about me. Um, you can find me at stu.dev, and I, I I tweet and blog and all the rest of it. Um, today I want to talk about um, something called Playwright and Playwright Sharp, and it's a an automation library, a web automation library. Um, and if you're thinking about web automation frameworks, you're probably thinking about um, some of these, and I, th I think probably Selenium is the one we all immediately think of. It's the sort of longest standing one. And um, they're all really good, <laughs> is the short version. Um, we've got Selenium, and Selenium works by something called WebDriver, which is its um, wire protocol for being able to send like JSON commands to a browser to say, hey, you know, click this button. Um, and it's it's pretty awesome. Like it's got some pros and cons. So like for example, pros are like you can run Selenium Grid. Uh, you can run against like Source Labs and Browser Stack. And if you want to be able to run against any number of different versions of a browser, um, for example, like a really old Android phone and a really weird version of Samsung browser, um, you can do that with Selenium. Um, but it's also got some downsides. Like, for example, um, I've been wrestling with my CI recently because um, I have to have a specific version of Chrome driver that aligns with the version of Chrome on the build agent. And that can be a bit messy. Uh, it's not talking to the browser directly in some cases. Um, as well, the um, because it's not because of the way it works, it's not really getting the full capability that it could from the browser. Uh, and we'll touch on on that in a bit when we look at Playwright. Um, another thing is like Selenium has this sort of one size fits all in terms of its APIs. Like for all the different languages, it doesn't feel like in any one language. It's um, like a coherent, nice API. It feels like this one size fits all. Um, but there are lots of other options. And we've got Cypress on the right that's worth calling out. Uh, that there's a very different approach. And it's probably a better approach if you're uh, building a, um, a sort of a client rich, um, like single page app or something. Uh, there's WebDriver IO, which is the bottom left one, um, which I don't know much about, but it's uh, apparently a very good option as well. And uh, then there's this sort of, um, this one on the bottom right that's quite relevant to Playwright, which is Puppeteer. So this came out of Google um, a few years back, and it utilizes something called the uh, the Chrome uh, DevTools protocol. So it talks straight to the browser's DevTools, um, which in my mind is a much better solution to this whole thing. Like the browser DevTools is where all the smarts are at, and it's like a it's a really good solution to this whole browser automation problem, right? Uh, and so when they they launched this, it only worked with Chrome. And uh, the sort of the sales pitch was like, um, you can run in like a serverless function, um, and you could uh, render a web page as a, a PDF. Um, and so th this um, this got a lot of popularity and, and caught on. Um, and recently, like only just this year, they've added support for multiple browsers um, because originally it was just kind of like just for Chrome. Um, and that's. That's not where the story ends. So the developers that built Puppeteer were originally working with Google. A couple of them left and were later rehired by Microsoft. Um, and so they kind of had almost another go at it, basically. <laughs> uh, that's not the official line. Um, but this time around, um, there were some different objectives. Um, so um, it was going to be um, cross-platform out of the box. So um, uh, not cross-platform, sorry, cross-browser out of the box. So it supports Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. Um, and it's evergreen, capable, reliable, and fast. And probably the, the big one to, to note there is the evergreen bit of it. So the way that uh, Playwright works is um, it talks straight to the browsers and it talks to, for example, Chrome via the, um, the DevTools protocol. And so to be able to do that, for example, with Firefox, um, they need to actually patch Firefox to be able to support it. Now, the idea is that long-term, they won't need to maintain their own patches and their own effectively slight fork of, of Firefox. Eventually, it'll all be merged um, up, upstream. And so, for example, with Chromium, all the patches they've made so far have been merged. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of one of the, the consequences of of using Playwright. So if you want that thing where you, you want to run against like um, an old version of a browser with something like browser stack, then this probably isn't the tool for that. You want to stick with things like uh, Selenium. Um, but then on the flip side, you get these benefits of because they're working with um, the latest browsers and they've got the patches in there, they get more capabilities. So it's more capable, it's more reliable, and it's fast. 
Uh, and so here's just some of the features um, that come with Playwright. Um, I, I think you come to expect a headless ex execution. Um, it has that auto waiting for elements to be visible and there's a whole bunch of rules about how it waits. Um, you can intercept um, network requests. And I'll show you this in a minute because this is like super cool. This is one of the, like, the killer features in my mind. Um, and then um, you can, although you can run on um, mobile devices, you can like, emulate the screen size. Um, it has support for shadow piercing selectors. I don't know what that is, but that sounds super cool. And if you're a, a front end dev, I'm sure that's like really relevant. <laughs> um, you can record videos, screenshots, and HDR files. So those are like the files you can open in um, in Fiddler that, that like record all the web requests. Um, it has this idea, and I'll show you the code in a minute, um, of context. And that acts as like a, a way of isolating sessions. So they all have their own cookie stores. So you can have like an admin user and then a non-admin user and have them sort of run side by side. Um, and finally, and this is uh, quite relevant, is it has um, bindings for C Sharp and, and Python. Uh, and I think they're going to add others. But um, Playwright itself is a, is a node library. Um, so I've got some links here. And I'll jump first to the Playwright site. So um, this is the, the website, and it's just basically a set of docs. And you can see here, as I change the version to an older version of Playwright, these browser versions change. So basically, it's evergreen, right? So they snapshot the browser at that point in time, and you get that flavor of Chromium. Um, and it's cross-platform. They have it for Linux, Mac, and, and Windows. Um, so if I switch back for a second to the current. and um, if you get some time, like if you want to learn more, this is the place to come because it kind of outlines all the functionality and gives you code snippets and all the rest of it. Uh, the thing I want to show you today is something called Playwright Sharp, which is here. And it, um, it originally started outside of the Microsoft org on GitHub and was mostly uh, built by uh, this guy called Dario um, and this chap as well, Mir. I'm probably butchering that. Um, apologies to him. Um, and basically, this uh, this new this NuGet package acts as like a client to um, Playwright, the the npm package, which runs a little server. Um, but but it's all seamless. Like the fact that it's running in a little server mode is seamless to you. You just install the NuGet package, and you run it, and it works just like CDM or anything else. Um, so I'm going to show that in a second. I, in fact, I'm going to show it now. Um, so let's get the Here's my code. This is just a console app. And I've just included the Playwright Sharp package. And so with no code here so far, I could start building this out um, and showing the APIs. But what I'm going to do instead is show you something cool, which is um, this. So um, if you install the CLI um, with like a npm install dash g, you don't have to do this, by the way, but this is just a, a cool little demo. Um, you can run this little command line tool that will code generate you the C-sharp. So if I run this now, we're going to get a browser that's going to pop up. And I'm going to go to, uh, I want to say to do mvc.com. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to click on React. Uh, and this is a little React to-do list. And I'm just going to type hello, enter. And I'm just going to position my console over here. I, I hope you can see this. Um, so as I'm typing this, hi, every one, I hope you can see if I wiggle my mouse around here, as I'm typing, it's like generating the code that I would want to, to write um, for my test. So if I close this now, then we've got it all here in the console. So let me copy this and put it in my code file. And some things to call out. I hope you can read this font size, by the way. Let me make it a touch bigger. Um, first thing to call out is this um, await um, Playwright install. So what this will do is this will download those evergreen browsers, like the versions that are specifically designed to work with this version of Playwright. And if this weirds you out by it downloading it at runtime, it only downloads it the once and it stores it in like a cache folder. Um, in the right place on your operating system. Um, but we don't actually have to do this. We can delete that line. And there is a .NET Global tool that gets installed or can be installed. Um, this one here. 
uh, Playwright Sharp install browsers. So this is just the .NET global tool and basically runs that command for you. So as soon as I've run it once on my CI agent, I've acquired the browsers and I don't need to do that anymore. Um, and so the next bit of the code starts Playwright and it needs to be started because again, it starts this little server locally that it talks to. Um, and then you can pick between Chrome, Firefox um, and WebKit. I want to keep it as uh, Chrome for a second. And by default, it will launch in a headless mode, but for to make a good demo, we're gonna have headless false. And we're also gonna slow it down because it's gonna be too quick for, uh, for, for us over here. So let's keep it to a hundred, no, a thousand, that's one second. And it's got this idea of a context and you create that from the browser. And that's basically like a session. Imagine you created like a new incognito session. Um, and so you could have multiple for different users, for example. Um, and then you create a page from that, and that's when you can actually do stuff like go to. And because it's talking to the dev tools, it actually knows a bit more about the the web pages and what's going on. So if you said page dot um, wait for navigation, it would do the right thing, but it also has this lifecycle events. And by default, it will wait for the load event, but it also has the DOM content loaded event. Um, but this is super cool. It also has network idle. So it will wait until there's no uh, non-idle requests on that page and then carry on. So because it has that integration with the browser, it's it's better. Uh, you see that the code generation tool has also created asserts for us if we wanted them, which I'm not using here. Um, let's run this thing. I just proved that it works. Uh, dot net run. And so the first time it's going to compile it. But here we go, we've got Chrome running. And I put that one second delay in it, so everything's going to take a second in between. Woo! Yeah, it worked. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the next thing I want to show is um, where the capabilities become really useful. So here's some code I made earlier. I'm just going to replace this code with that. And it's the same code, except um, we've added this thing down here, this little uh, root, root async. And what you can do is you can say, when a certain path matches, I'm actually going to intercept this request. So, and I'll show you in a second in the dev tools what this looks like, because this is pretty weird. Um, you, can, uh, you can then, with that request, um, do, do stuff like log out the, the URL, which I'm doing here, I'm writing it to the console. But you can also decide what to do with it. You can say like dot continue, which will let it go happily on its way. Or you can say dot fulfill, uh, and I'm going to fulfill it with an OK status code and some content that I've, I've done earlier. So here I've got some content where I've just replaced the JSON with hello.net southwest. And so if I run this, let's run it. Hopefully it works. Oh, um, I took out the code that, that actually navigated to the thing. So if I click React, <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll see here it's a bit small, um, but hello.net Southwest. And if we look at the web request here um, in the Chrome DevTools, and I think I need to go to the home page for it to load that. Uh, buried away in here somewhere. Oh, where is it? Total demo fail. I might, I might have to browse back to it again. Hold on. Where's the React? I'll hit this one. I tell you what. Let me run it again, just quickly, because this is this is worth seeing. Um, what you should see is. Is a total dem demo fail. Oh man, it worked. Um, it worked previously, um, but what you would have seen is like the browser itself. Um, I'm just going to pretend this is it. It's not. Um, the browser itself thinks it's made that web request. Like it has all the security headers. Uh, if you look in like the timings, um, you see that the you see it all happened right. And the browser, as far as it's concerned, has made that request and you've intercepted it before it's even left like the network stack. Uh, so you know, this opens up a whole bunch of possibilities about how you can test your code. Um, 
So with that uh, spectacular demo fail right at the end, uh, that concludes the demo. So let me get back to the slides. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, and that's it. <laughs>